Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we got a little deviation from our usual car content on the channel. Uh, over the Black Friday 2020 holiday, I ended up picking up this Dell Inspiron 15, the 5505 model. It's got the AMD processor in it and it only came with like eight gigs of RAM. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes. I think it comes with eight and then i'm gonna upgrade the ssd on it i'm actually gonna add a secondary ssd into the second slot so stay tuned so before we start i'm gonna go ahead and just unbox it. I haven't opened this thing yet. I got it in the mail a while ago and I just was waiting on all my parts to come in so I can do the upgrade. So this is a pretty basic model as far as what comes in the box. It just comes with a standard charger with a Dell's mini barrel, the smaller barrel. This is a new thing that they've done the last couple of years, which sucks if you're committed to Dell, you're used to having the larger barrel, but this is a, one of the smaller barrel plugs and it's got your re regular grounded plug. So this thing is a 65 watt Dell charger. So that's the charger there, comes in your normal plastic wrap. So I own a lot of Dell machines. Starting from the Pro stuff for work, I have a Precision Pro for work. I've got the G5 I use for video processing and I actually bought this one for my wife. At first, looking at it, it looks like it's an aluminum chassis like the XPS's and the Precision's, the professional Precision's, but it's actually a, a plastic cover, I believe, but it looks aluminum from the outside. Yeah, inside, it's got the aluminum look and everything, but I think this is a regular plastic laptop. It's an Inspiron, which is their consumer model. So it's usually the cheaper build quality and all that. So inside, you can see right there, it's got a full size keyboard with a number pad on the side. So overall with the AMD process, I think it's got the AMC Ryzen 7 or was it the 5? I'll post down here what processor it has. But for the price point on Black Friday, it was a good deal. So we'll get, go ahead and open this. Got to take off all the screws on the back cover here. So I got all the screws out, except for these two. These two are held on by a retainer. So I get, got a card and you just go ahead and just tuck it along the here and just pull it along and let it pop out of the clips along the edges. Careful not to break any of them that, that are in there. This cover is plastic, so it, it comes off pretty easy. This is much easier than some of the other Dell covers I usually pop off. You just kind of, if you get stuck, just go back over it again and it should pop right out. Here's some tape or something that's holding the center down, so you just gotta be careful with that and it comes right up. Oh, it's not a tape, there's a little ball and then the plastic right here. So before we start diving into it, I'm gonna show you around the laptop from what I know. So it looks like these are the two RAM slots here. So it comes with one eight gigabit stick on this side and then the blank one on this side. I really wanted to just get an additional uh, 3200 eight gigabyte one, but there was a Black Friday deal. So I ended up just buying a two pack of eight gigs, which is 16 gigabytes from Crucial that was on sale over Black Friday. I could have gotten one, but it didn't make any sense. So I wanted to have it dual channel where it was the exact same RAM on both sides. So I'm gonna actually take this RAM out. I think this is a Samsung, an OEM Samsung stick. So yeah, it's a OEM Samsung, eight gigabyte, 3200. And I'm replacing it with two crucial sticks, the same speed, 3200. So I'm gonna put those in. While we're in here, so here's the high, here's the high Nix SSD, the 256 that this computer comes with. So this is the number one slot. This is the number two slot right here. So you can see right now, it doesn't have any of its hardware. So that's one of the things I'm gonna to explain to you guys in a minute about the hardware. When this computer first came out a couple months ago, it actually came with a heat sink and everything. 
that you needed to put your SSD in, but they cheaped out and they quit putting it in there. So now we have just a blank slot. It's missing the heat sink, it's missing the hardware and screw, so you have to order that stuff. So I'll go over the, the parts that I ordered from Dell in order to do that in a second. Other than that, this is the battery. And if you're really careful and you follow instructions, you should be popping this battery ribbon right here while you're working on it. They want you to pop that out to isolate the battery from accidentally turning the laptop on. But other than that, I think you got your wireless card here, you got your fan. That's pretty much it in here as far as stuff that you might be able to upgrade or remove. I don't know what this is right here, but it looks like it's out of place. This looks like some kind of coin battery for the, you have the CR2032 for the memory or the, the EEPROM or whatever that. Yeah, this looks odd. This, this looks like it needs to be tucked in here because there is a little spot. So I'm going to tuck this back in and fit it correctly before. Yeah, there's a little, little thing right there that holds this little chip in and it fits right in there. So it popped out during probably shipping and manufacturing. So we'll dive into the easy part first, which is the RAM. If you've installed RAM before, it's pretty simple. It just tucks right in and clips right in. You got the two crucial sticks here. So the crucial comes with, looks like a Micron chip. So that's a good brand and a good, so this side goes in like this. Make sure it's seated properly and then pop it down. And it pops right in on this side. The matching RAM stick on this side. So this upside down. So the face sticker goes down on here just to fit the slot goes in, pops down, and we're good there. So pretty simple. So the Samsung chips are probably their chips. I don't see anybody else's markings on here. A lot of times these OEMs, they'll make the chip, but they'll use different memory from others. So that one I'll probably just post up on Marketplace or something for 20 bucks, which is really all it's worth. So as far as the slot goes right here, what you're gonna need to order from Dell for the SSD to work, you need to order this little bracket that offsets one of these holes so you can screw in your SSD. The part number for this is KYMC9. It is like three or four dollars or something like that. It's pretty cheap. Then you're going to need the screws that go in here which are M1.6s by two millimeters. So that's a very odd size. Usually you can find screws like this in those laptop kits but an M1.6 is very uncommon size because it's so thin and small. So I had to order three of these from Dell. You need one for this bracket and then two more to mount the heat sink. So the OEM heat sink is the one that's back ordered and I couldn't order that one. I had it ordered, they canceled my order so I had to go find another solution. So I decided to pick up a cheap $10 Amazon one, which is kind of a universal one. This kit came with two of these heat sinks. And what I was planning to do was just drill a hole and fit it in here. That's why I got the two extra screws so that way I could screw it down, put the SSD on here because the, the, the SSD is very tight so you got to, uh, so the heat sink is actually on the bottom instead of the top like it's usually. And the beauty of this one kit that I ordered, it came with extra M2.0 screws. You need one of those screws to mount the SSD if you don't already have one from other laptop projects and it comes with all these little uh, pads and everything. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to try to fit it in here. There are a couple of nubs and everything that you got to deal with in here to fit it, but I'm hoping that I could just drill it. I use these screws to screw it into the factory hole that's here already. Hopefully that works, then, then uh, you know, I'll have a heat sink solution for the SSD. So before we start doing this, I'm going to mount the mounts in here. And if you guys are interested in any of those parts, I'll have links down in the description to all the parts I'm using right now, along with the part numbers that you're going to need to order from Dell. The SSD I'm using is actually an XPG SX8100. This one is an all data brand and it got really good reviews uh, when I was looking it up. I think I paid like 90 bucks for that. So I'm gonna use that It's a one terabyte. So we'll go ahead and get this baby in here now. So you gotta get, take this bracket, line it up. So the small hole fits where the threaded hole is. Other threaded hole on here for the SSD fits on this plastic nub. Get it right lined up. Get one of your Dell M1.6s. And these 1.6s aren't cheap. They're like two bucks each, which is kind of highway robbery. But then again, if you have a Dell rewards program, they actually ship these for you for free. And the FedEx shipping costs probably more than this screws. I paid a total of $8.50 for everything with tax and cost them more to ship this than the tax, than, than the cost of these. So. 
So yeah, this little offset bracket right here fits right into there. And then your SSD will screw into that hole once you mount it in there. So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna take my caliper, I'm gonna measure the distance from this little edge right here to that nub, and I'm gonna mark it on my heat sink so I know where to drill. So I think it is about 20 millimeters from this little edge here to that nub. So I'm gonna mark 20 millimeters from the end of this guy because I wanted to sit right about that spot that lines up perfectly right there. And then from the side to side, this direction, I'm gonna measure from here. So there's two little lips on here that you're gonna use to tuck this right up against. So that's about 10 millimeters. So you wanna measure uh, 20 millimeters in and 10 millimeters to the middle and then drill a hole and try to get that nub right there. So I started this hole with a 1 16th bit. It is a little bit too small for that nub, so I went and got another bit, which is a 3 seconds. It's a little bit bigger. I'm going to try to open up the hole better so I can get that past that nub. So now that I've drilled past that nub, I have to drill another hole right below it for the M1.6 screw, which is gonna be the 1 16th bit that I'm gonna really need for that one. So I'm gonna measure it just to get the exact dimension with the caliper and drill it in. So it's about five millimeters right under that nub. It looks like we ran into a little bit of issue. I got everything to line up pretty good as far as the holes go. The problem is this thing doesn't sit flush with this little nub down here for the M1.6 screw. So the two millimeter screw that I ordered that the OEM uses is not long enough. You need like a, maybe a three or a four millimeter screw to reach that thread. My next option now is I've got these two screws up here, which they're, they're, they're not really screw holes. They're just plastic holes for the mount here. I might line up those and try to screw in a, a one of these M 2.0. That's the only way that I can really secure this board now. So I measured that distance over here from the nub to that next hole. So it's about 17 and a half millimeters. So I'm gonna have to mark that onto here and drill a new hole about 17 and a half millimeters away. Cleaned up, all the burrs are gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and just screw it down I checked the holes out and M2.0 don't fit well. So I had to go into my box of hard drive screws. So these are M2.1 or 2.2, but this one actually fits into this hole better and it actually threads through. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. So we got that mounted, everything's nice and flush. The next thing I want to do is get my SSD. So the SSD back here has got the label and it's got some chips and it sits pretty snug on here but up here there's no chip so it doesn't touch the actual thing. So this thing comes with some of these thicker things. I might just trim a piece back here. That way it fits onto here and it actually makes contact with the SSD board so that at least I can get some heat transfer through this. Because back here, I can't do it because we don't have much clearance back here. So now that we got it mounted up, go ahead and put the XPG heat sink sticker on here. This one's nice and thin, gives us enough clearance. So this one's notched, so you just line up the notches, stick it on here, and hopefully that's good enough clearance. So now we got pretty much everything's in. This thing's nice and secure. I'm not worried about the heat sinking now. We got plenty of that. If you look at the cover, the cover actually has a little bit of thermal tape here where this slot is already. So that's good. And then there's a little speaker grill which provides a little bit of airflow there too. So we just go ahead and snap everything back on and reattach the cover. And then we'll go inside and I'll show you guys how to initialize the, the SSD so you could actually use it. and we're done with the install. So 
So I put this computer back together, turned it on and set it up and got into here and my touchpad didn't work. I did a little bit of research online and apparently if you over tighten your back cover, your touch pad doesn't work and it doesn't click. It actually holds it down and you can't do anything except move it. You can't click on anything. So I realized that. So I loosened the bolts and it ended up working. So now that we're in here, we want to check to see if the RAM was installed correctly. If you look over here on the side, you can see that the, it shows 16 gigabytes of RAM. And you can also go up here to computer and then just look at system properties and then it'll show you all the different information about your device. It's a Ryzen 5 4500 with Radeon graphics, 16 gigs with 15.4 usable. Good. So next thing you want to do, you see right here on the screen, all you can see is a C drive. You don't see that extra SSD that we just put in. So where you want to go here to the start menu, right click up to disk manager, then you open your disk manager and it should show your drive. So, yep. So it popped up this drive and it wants you to uh, set it up and initialize it. So you just do all the defaults. We want this one, we want a GPT and hit OK. It's initialized. So now we have to allocate it or partition it. And so unallocate it right now. So you just want to set up a new simple volume, right click new simple volume, and then you just follow the wizard. Unless you want to divide up your drive, you can do that here, but I won't. I'm just going to use the whole SSD as my storage drive. So I'm going to just call it D, move forward. And then you can name it right here. So I'm just going to call it storage SSD. And we want to do a quick format and we'll go forward on that. You can enable file compression, file and folder compression here if you want. I'm, I think I'm just going to leave it like this. Just let it go through and now that it's finished, it shows up up here on your volumes and it shows up over here as SSD and we're good now. This is all it takes to set it up. Hey guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. As you can see, changing the memory or the RAM on this is pretty easy. Uh, just pop it in, pop it out. Even taking the cover off this computer is pretty easy. The hardest part was doing that rig heat sink that I had to do just because I couldn't get the OEM one. And I've been researching that OEM one for over a month now when I ordered this computer and it's impossible to find. Nobody's got it in stock. Even when they do have it in stock, it's a pain to try to get the right sales rep to sell it to you. But I'll end up posting all the parts down in the description box of this video along with the part number for that heat sink that you need. And if you were lucky enough, you might be able to get it. It's only like four or five bucks for that heat sink. What I did today was just kind of my workaround for it. And using that universal heat sink from Amazon works just fine. You just got to put in a little bit of work. But overall, I think it's going to work fine over the long run. And it might be better than the OEM one. But anyways, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel to check out all my other DIY videos, most of my videos are on cars and car projects but once in a while I'll do these computer projects where I get new computers new technology and I'll mod them or upgrade them and I'll have the videos on that thanks for watching all the way to the end guys and I'll talk to you guys next time